One of the most synonymous things with video games is the power-up, and today we're going to look at some of the most unique ones. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the 10 most unusual and awesome power-ups in video games. So before we get going, let's talk a little bit about the fact that traditional power-ups aren't quite as common nowadays as they used to be. Like, yes, it's made a bit of a comeback in games like Doom and Doom Eternal, where the little floating icon spins around in midair, you pick it up and, and something increases or you get a new ability or whatever. That's a thing that, yes, we're seeing a little bit of again, but we're not going to stick with that for the purposes of this list. In recent years, we think it's kind of become a little bit more abstract, so to speak. So, like, here, let's talk about power-ups as a kind of collectible or upgrade type thing you can unlock. <laughs> little confusing, but we know it when we see it. So starting off at number 10, it's the timepiece from Dishonored 2. So this is, without a doubt, one of the coolest power-ups of all time. Now, keeping in mind, it was basically the design of a level. It's a gimmick that causes a level to work a specific way, and it's only available in one level. However, it drastically improves your abilities in an ability-based game. And what the timepiece basically does in the mansion that this level is takes you between the past and present. Now, the interesting thing about this level was that the technique they used to do the past and present aspects of it is actually something Arcane developed back when they worked on Bioshock 2 in the Outer Persephone level. Now, there's a lot to say about Bioshock 2 and what aspects of it are good and what aspects are bad, but this is an undeniably interesting aspect of that game that they realized they could harness to do something that was ultimately very difficult. This is essentially two maps in one map that you would have to design separately that you're warping between before the SSD generation. This is still plain old hard drive RAM loading stuff. And not only is it extremely technically impressive, but the results feel totally seamless. It's probably the best level in the game in terms of not only technical ability, but storytelling and atmosphere. It just, it's such a masterclass in giving the player a power that they didn't have before and it being incredible in the context of the game. And number nine is the Otter Hat from Death Stranding, probably one of the silliest ones. Like, we went from one of the coolest things imaginable to something that is out outright silly. Just very, very silly. So you get the Otter Hat from Conan O'Brien, which it's already outwardly silly at this point, because Conan O'Brien is in Death Stranding for some reason. Yes, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, The Tonight Show briefly, TBS is Conan, and... Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, the podcast, that Conan O'Brien has this absurd celebrity cameo, and he gives you the otter hat. And the otter hat isn't simply a, a silly little thing to wear on Norman Reedus' head as he slowly treks across an America that no longer has a society on top of it. It's all below. No, it's not for looks. It's, uh, it's actually a thing that gives you new swimming techniques, and uh, they're actually useful swimming techniques. You're able to swim on your back like an otter and um, because crossing water in this game is already like really aggravating and not great and this actually makes it a little easier so um, if you consider this stupid looking that's fine it will make your life easier and you'll stop caring At number eight is the weird mushroom from Mario Maker, which was introduced in the original Mario Maker. Um, it's probably the oddest upgrade in the Mario games. There's some weird ones, I'm not gonna lie, but the weird mushroom is called the weird mushroom and it lives up to its name. They didn't call it that for no reason because what it does is make Mario into a, a big gangly doofus. I, I don't know why he looks like, look at that. That is strange. It feels wrong in every way. Like, uh, his stance is upsetting. Like, he's standing like a rabbit on his hind legs, but he's proportional to a much larger being. It's It stretches Mario into this, like, ghoulish creature from... Mushroom Kingdom Nightmares. Uh, and, and I don't I don't want to forget about it on this list. This is... I mean, other than making Mario really gangly, uh, what does it do? So, Weird Mario can jump a little higher than normal. That's it. 
<laughs> it's not really it's not really a big deal in terms of what powers you might get especially considering how much bigger mario becomes with the weird mushroom you just can jump a bit higher that's it and you know what i'm all for upgrades and enhancements that simply exist to be weird this isn't really a useful one um but it's breaking the rules in a way we really cannot help but love and would love to see more nonsense like this in mario <laughs> And number seven is the Kin Transformation in Bloodborne. Probably one of the weirdest power-ups in any game ever. By completing a side quest for a deformed experiment of the research hall, you can sign a contract with the Luminwood Kin Covenant. Completing her requests eventually gets you a Carol Rune, basically a little upgrade accessory you can equip. Instead of giving you a little buff or a bonus though, it transforms your body into a glowing blue celestial nightmare. Even better, equipping the cost parasite weapon gets you an enhanced moveset with new animations and an improved dodge. You just have to put up with looking like a great old one. And it's not the worst trade. Your head might look like a disgusting, fleshy, blooming flower, but your dash is longer, and that matters probably more than how you look in the game. It is gross. It is gross. Looks like something out of uh, Last of Us, but you know, whatever. Again, you're more powerful. And number six is duplication in Scarlet Nexus. Instead of gaining literal power-ups in Scarlet Nexus, you gain people. Each character on your team is like a walking power-up you can activate at any time, and they're not always available. As you increase your relationship with different characters, you unlock all these various abilities when you activate a character's power in combat. My favorite, and definitely one of the weirdest, is the duplication power. Once you sufficiently level up your social link with that character, you'll duplicate into four and then five total bodies all dishing out damage at the same time the best part about using power-ups in scarlet nexus is that you can chain them together you also have characters that gain superhuman speed they make you invulnerable to damage they give you the ability to instantly teleport slow down time etc uh, each one's very useful but if you can just imagine quadrupling your power by activating duplication while you're also buffed with a deadly pyrokinesis that's a spicy combo i don't want to characterize this game is like unnecessarily difficult but it's it's one of those times where you feel like oh there we go i'm just gonna take everybody down now and number five is zombie blood from call of duty zombies uh which is not going away anytime soon uh this bonus mode has been lurching along with the call of duty franchise ever since its original surprise inclusion in world at war I mean, it's become a mainstay with an absurdly elaborate level of map building and complex hidden quests that usually end up being solved at like a community level. Um, usually you're able to purchase power-ups with the points you've earned blasting zombies, but there's also sort of alternate classic power-ups that drop from enemies as well. My personal favorite out of those is Zombie Blood, which appeared in Black Ops 2, 3, and 4. Zombie Blood, as a power-up, is a lot more weird than it is useful. Grabbing it transforms your character into a zombie, widening your field of view with special effect, and making all the undead hordes simply stop chasing you. It, it doesn't last long, but it's very weird. And it's required for some of the Easter egg quests. Um, it's just one of those ones you can't help but love whenever it appears. I mean, it can kind of be useful, but mostly it's just really fun. And number four, the Dr. Copy ability from Kirby Planet Robobot. Kirby is a hungry pink fluff that can't stop eating the same classic copy abilities. But every few games, the developers down at HAL Labs give him something new that doesn't stick around for super long. Maybe they're totally unique to the game. Maybe they stick around for maybe two games. But the Dr. Copy ability is one of those specifically. It's also easily one of my favorites. So when Kirby uses the Dr. Copy ability, he becomes a... Uh, pharmaceutical maniac plopping pills just in every possible direction his primary weapon is giant pills that bounce around kind of maybe randomly i'm not 100 percent sure how to characterize it he can also use his portable lab to mix up a random chemical concoction that unleashes one of three different elemental attacks even better kirby can store the elemental power within and unleash it later the only way you lose it is if you take a hit it's so weirdly hyper specific it's become a favorite from like the entire franchise like step aside suplex the doctor's in
And number three, Train Yoshi from Yoshi's Island. Anybody remember this one? This one, this goes back a ways, okay? Back to Super Nintendo. Yoshi's Island, which was originally Super Mario World 2, keeping in mind that it became its own franchise outside of that, was a game where you'd normally just be sort of running around, solving puzzles, and keeping baby Mario safe. Not only because it was an objective, but his screams were so painful to hear. Uh, for certain levels, there's transformation bubbles that turn Yoshi into various things, like a helicopter, a drill tank, a uh, submarine's one of them. And those are well and good, but uh, this is for weird stuff you don't see too often. So, train form. When in train form, Yoshi sticks to these tracks that are painted on walls with white chalk, and outlined enemies can spring to life and attack you while you're navigating these chalk tracks. And uh, it's as weird as it sounds. You can only chug along moving forward, changing directions only at the these track intersections and well it's a struggle honestly it's not really that i want to say this is a great power up it's it's unusual and awesome in its own way but it's not necessarily enjoyable it's just so spectacularly weird and number two is dog mode from Rise of the Triad. Speaking of weird things, let's go with something a little more fun. Rise of the Triad is kind of a sorta sequel to Wolfenstein 3D, the original first person shooter. The developers went totally wild with it too. They threw on all these stupid special weapons like magical baseball bats. And yeah, they do exactly what you think. They launch big arrays of explosive baseballs. Uh, the best thing in this game is dog mode which is basically god mode but when you spell god backwards you get dog and i'm guessing that's where the inspiration for this came from because it's god mode except you're a dog you are a dog that's the actual power up you grab it and you turn into an invincible dog you're short you have a furry little nose you can claw enemies with an adorable paw that you have you even have a killer dog bark that blows away any bad guy dumb enough to get close to you How does this jokey nonsense fit into a gritty game about fighting an evil cult? Well, it doesn't. And that's what makes a game like Rise of Triad so special. The developers just were like, yeah, whatever, let's do it. They threw all this weird nonsense in the game. And, and they didn't have a marketing team saying, wow, no, <laughs> no, don't do that. We can't, we can't create enough expectation for this to be okay. And that's great. That is a time that I often wish we could go back to. And finally, at number one is Boo Mario from Mario Galaxy, the original. Mario's, of course, got a lot of different transformations and power-ups throughout history, but Boo Mario's a big favorite for probably two reasons. One, he's a spooky, ghosty Mario, and two, because of number one, he is adorable. The Boo Mario power-up turns Mario into a Boo, which gives you all the benefits that it implies. You can fly, you can pass through solid objects, you can read the Boo language, which you probably didn't even really know they had until you became Boo Mario. Um, it also confirms a, a long-held rumor that all the boos are actually ladies. When uh, Boo Mario appears, all of the other boos instantly fall in love with him. They chase him with pink hearts over their heads. It makes sense because apparently Boo was based off a very shy woman in the Nintendo offices, which is both adorable and very, very strange. Got a couple of bonuses for you. The Poison Mist from Symphony of the Night. Probably one of the strangest and dubiously useful upgrades to ever grace a Metroidvania. Gives you limited flight and the ability to pass through some objects. Also makes you immune to damage for a short period of time. Very interesting. Doesn't ever reappear. So it's it's literally just in Symphony of the Night. And then finally the Rambling Evil Mushroom from Smash Brothers Ultimate. Uh, it was not a power-up in Earthbound where it originally appeared. And it kind of is isn't in Super Smash Brothers, but you deploy it against an enemy and, well, this happens. You throw it at an enemy, a mushroom grows out of their head, and their controls reverse until it goes away. And it's it's not helpful in Smash Brothers. Like in Earthbound, you get a mushroom growing out of your head and you have reverse controls. It's annoying. In Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, or any Smash Brothers game, that it's it's the worst. It's literally the worst to have your con controls reversed. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment, 
let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, the subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I am Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks. I'm right here on Game Ranks.